Hi there, and welcome to Section 6, where you'll learn about some tools and continuous workflows when deploying with a team in mind. In the previous section, we learned the basics of database deployment. In this section, we are going to be focused on using and learning Git because of its ease of use and popularity. But many of the things taught in this section can be applied to many different tools and situations to help you and your team deploy with ease. We'll look at the basics of Git, continuous deployment workflows, the many different environments, and then finally, we'll end the section by looking at how you might want to structure permissions. This is the first video of Section 6. We'll cover Git basics to help set up the rest of the videos in this section. We'll learn how to create a new Git repository and make our first commit. We'll learn the basics of pushing, pulling, and merging our code. And then also the basics of branching. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you're going to want to do is open up your terminal and create a new Laravel project. CD into that new project. Now before we do anything with Git, we have to initialize a bare repository. You can simply do this by executing git init. Great job! You just created an empty Git repository. What this means is that although your project has code, nothing has been added or committed to it using Git. So let's quickly change that. So before we can commit anything, we have to let git know what files we want it to start tracking. We do that with the git add command. You can use a file name to add a new file, or you can use a period instead to track all available files. You can think of the period as a wildcard character. If you type in git status, you'll see a list of all the new files you just informed git about. Now you're ready to make your first commit. To do this, you can use the git commit command. Now with every commit, you need to log a descriptive message about that commit. If you use git commit, git will launch your default text editor for terminal. I personally prefer to use the dash m flag that allows me to add my message with my commit directly in the terminal. Great, you just made your first commit. So in order to make this available to your other team members, we need to create a centralized repository that is accessible by all team members. Git calls these remote repositories. We're going to use GitHub because it's free and easy to use. So log in and create a new repository. Give your repository name and description. To avoid any possible errors, do not add a readme or .gitignore file. Great job! Now you have a central repository that any of your team members can access. Although, before we can push or pull any code, you'll need to set up this remote repository on your local repository. To do that, locate your new GitHub repository's SSH link and copy it. Going back to your terminal, type in the command git remote add origin and paste the link you just copied to the end of the command. You just linked your local repository with your remote repository on GitHub with the name origin. If you'd like to, you can type in git remote-v to see a list of your remotes, and you'll see the one you just created in the list. Pushing code to your repository is simple. In your terminal, you type in git push. You add the remote and branch you want to push to. So your command would look something like git push origin master. Easy enough, right? Now your code can be pulled by other team members to collaborate with. So let's assume for a second one of your team members pulled your repository down and iterated upon what you just pushed. They then push their code to the centralized repository. In order for you to see those changes and iterate upon them, you need to fetch and merge the new code. Just like when we pushed your code, you can use git pull instead and specify the remote and branch you want to fetch and merge. So you can type in your terminal git pull origin master and it'll pull the new code down, merge, and give you a status report. The last thing I want to cover in this video is branching. It's an easy concept to use. It's a powerful workflow to integrate, but you have to be careful because it can also get messy really fast if you don't keep things maintained. We'll learn more about branching in a later video, but for this video, let's learn how to create, push, and delete a branch. If you type in git checkout b testing, git will create a new branch called testing and switch the branch you're currently on to testing. So think about what you just did here. You created a new branch of code based on the master branch. Anything you do while on the testing branch will not affect master until you decide to merge the two branches. 
If you make a change in testing and switch back to master, it would be as if everything you just did in testing was undone. You can push this branch for others on your team to see by using the same push command we used earlier, except this time we'll use testing instead of master. If you want to pull this branch or another branch, you would do the same but use pull. Assuming everything is the way you'd like it to be in testing, it's time to merge your new code into master. Type in git checkout master to switch back to your master branch. Type in git merge testing. Assuming there are no conflicts, your code is now merged and you can push to master for others on your team to see your new changes. In case you're unfamiliar with a merge conflict, these tend to pop up when you edit one line of code and commit it, and your coworker who sits next to you edits that same line of code and commits it. Basically, Git is unsure of how to handle it, so it throws both options back up and makes you manually merge the two commits. I'm sure you can see how this could become a headache. Finally, now that we've merged our branch, we can keep it or we can throw it away. To delete it, you can use git branch dash d testing. You need to understand that this only deletes it from your local repository. After you've deleted the branch locally, you must then delete it from any remote repositories you've added it to. You can do that additionally executing git push your remote and then colon and then the branch name. So there you have it. Great job. You've learned some of the basic commands when using git.